In this video, we'll be looking at an example of finding the work needed to lift a rope some distance. Here we have a heavy rope that's 20 meters long that hangs over the edge of a building that's 40 meters high, and we're told that the rope has a linear density of 2 kilograms per meter. So the first question that we want to answer is how much work is done in pulling this rope to the top of the building? So first thing we want to do is draw ourselves a picture. So we have our building here. Draw some little sketch of a building. Okay, and then I have my rope here that's going to be hanging off the side of the building. So we'll draw our rope just sort of like this. Um, it says that the rope is 20 meters long and the building is 40 meters high. So this 40 meters information we're actually not going to use, but it just does give us the information that the rope is hanging the whole way. It's not coiled up on the ground at all. So this is hanging freely. Um, I need to put some information on here, some labels. So let's let zero be the bottom of that rope and 20 meters here be the top of the rope. We're told, let's see, the rope has this particular linear density and we are trying in this first question here to pull the rope. That looks like the entire rope here. We want to pull to the top of the building. Okay, so we're going to be looking at setting up an integral to determine the work done in this case. Um, remember that when we think about these lifting type problems, I'm thinking about lifting up each little piece of the rope at a time. So I have some little delta y pieces of the rope that I'm trying to lift. So off to the side I can think about the work to lift the i-th slice of rope. Okay, and remember my work is force times distance. I know force whoops, is mass times gravity here, so I'm going to have mass times gravity times distance. The mass of my little tiny piece is this 2 kilograms per meter, my density, times the fact that it's delta y meters of rope. I'm going to have gravity, so those quantities together give me my force. And then the distance that it has to travel, okay, if this point down here is some yi star, it has to travel this 20 minus yi star meters. Okay, so it looks like I need to be integrating 2 times g times 20 minus y dy. Okay, and what do my bounds need to be? Well, I'm lifting up the whole rope all the way from 0 to 20, so those are going to be my bounds. So we can go ahead and compute this. So I'm going to have 2g, those are just constants, so I can pull those out in front of my integral, and then the antiderivative of 20 minus y. So we'll have 20y minus y squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 20. Okay, so we have 2g. Let's see, this will be 20 times 20 or 400 minus 20 squared over 2. Okay, minus what happens when I would plug in 0. We'd actually just get some zeros there. So we have 2g times 400 minus, let's see, this will be 400 over 2, so that'll be 200. So we end up with 400 g joules for the total work done. And we will leave our answers in terms of g, in terms of gravity, so we don't have to do the arithmetic of 9.8 times whatever other number that we have here. Okay, so that's how much work was done in pulling that entire rope up to the top of the building. So let's think about how things change a little bit in terms of how we're going to set this up if I wanted to just pull half the rope up to the top of the building. So now we're going to have to think a little bit more carefully about how we set up our integral to determine um, the amount of work done. So again, we're going to start with a sketch of our building. So I've got my building here. And I'm going to draw the rope. I'm going to draw the rope on the building here because we're going to think a little bit about how its position changes. So I have my rope here. Um, I'm thinking about labeling this as being a, a point being zero units from the bottom all the way up to 20 units here, 20 meters um, from the bottom of the, the rope to a point at the top. So that's just my starting position. And I want to think about moving this so that I have it in the following position here. I'm going to have it um, halfway down here um, and then halfway on the building. Okay, so you're going from the whole thing hanging down to having part of it at the top and part of it hanging down. So we want to think about how much work is done in this case. Um, one thing that might help us a little bit is to think about the two segments of the rope that I have. 
So um, if I just kind of shade the bottom part of this green, that's going to be the part that ends up hanging down there. And then that red part will end up being at the top of the building. Okay, so right there at 10 meters from the from the bottom, that green part there is then going to move up to being this green part that's partially hanging down. So the way we think about doing these lifting problems is we think about lifting up little slices of our rope at a time and there's going to be something different going on between what's going on with that green slice and what's going on with the, the red or the slices of the green piece and the slices of the red piece. So our work it's going to turn out is going to have to be an integral from 10 to 20 of something plus an integral from 0 to 10. So there's going to be something a little bit different in the integrands for those different pieces. So the 10 to 20 piece has to do with um, the work for the, the top part of the rope. And the 0 to 10 here has to do with the bottom half of the rope. So for the top half of the rope, we have the same sort of situation that we had before. I'm slicing that up into little pieces. I know that I have um, a little width of a piece delta y, and I have this density that's 2 kilograms per meter. So my density here times dy is giving me my mass. 2 kilograms per meter times delta y um, meters is giving me that, uh, that 2 dy or 2 delta y. Um, kilograms, so that's my mass times my acceleration is g, and then I see that the distance that I have to travel from a point that's along here up to the top, that's some yi star, is the 20 minus yi star. So I do have um, 20 minus y in here again. So that accounts for the top half of the rope. But now let's think about what's happening for the bottom half of the rope. So for the bottom half, I'm taking little pieces here from that green region and moving them up to the top, but What's different here is that um, the pieces on that green piece are actually having to move all the same distance um, up in order to get into the second position. So we notice that if I start off at this position of 10, that's going to then move to a position of 20 here. And I see that the position that was at 0 is going to move up 10 meters to being at um, let's see if I had this position here is at 0 and now the tip of the rope here is at position 10. So we still have the um, mass component coming from the 2dy, the density times the little delta y um, length, and I still have my acceleration, but the distance that things are moving now is a fixed number of meters of 10 meters. Every point on the green rope is moving 10 meters, whereas when we're looking at the, the red piece, the top half of the rope, um, every piece on that part of the rope is going to have to move a different distance that can be described by this 20 minus y, because we see if I was at position 10, that does have to move up 10 um, meters to get all the way up to the top, but if I start out at position 0, like 19, I only have to move 1. So there is a variable distance going on for every point along that, that top half of the rope, whereas for the bottom half, each point is moving the same 10 meter distance to get level with the, with the top of the building. Okay, So we would compute that, but let's think a little bit more about why um, this work is not um, some of the things not computed in, in a way you might think that it would be. So a really common um, way to think about this is say, well, if I only need to do the um, top half, and before I had to do 0 to 20, well now I'll just do 10 to 20. So let's just kind of think about what this means. So if I just did 10 to 20 of the same integrand that I had before, so I've already told you we need a second piece, but let's just think about what this would be saying. So if I have this piece from, from 10 to 20 here, um, then my rope that was hanging down like this, if I've only accounted for moving up parts of that rope between um, excuse me, the top half of the rope, the, the 10 to 20 piece, okay, then I have my rope here, okay, now what this is saying is I've moved up the part from 10 to 20, I've lifted every piece on that top half, but I haven't accounted for the bottom half, so the bottom half is still like floating there. We know that's not actually 
that's something that can happen. As I pull up that top piece, that bottom piece has to come along. So we need to account for that bottom piece. Okay, we can't just leave it floating there. That's not how ropes work. When you pull up the, the top half, it's going to bring that bottom half along. So what's one other way that we could have thought about setting this up? You can think of that bottom half as um, dead weight. Okay, so another um, method here, another way of thinking about this, you can think about our work done here as the work to lift the top half plus the work to lift the, lift the bottom half. But now think of that bottom half as just dead weight. As if you just have some sort of heavy load um, that you have to lift all of that load some distance. So the work for the top half is an integral from 10 to 20 like we've seen here of this 2g times 20 minus y dy. But now we can think of the work to lift that bottom half as just the force times distance computation where I have constant force. So what's the mass of that, that bottom half of the rope? Well, it's two um, kilograms per meter density, okay, times the fact that that bottom half of the rope is 10 meters long. And that gives me my mass. I'd have to multiply that times gravity to get acceleration. And then I'd have to multiply that times moving a distance of 10 meters. Okay, So when we think of that bottom half as dead weight, we can just use a straightforward um, force times distance calculation because that, that bottom half has the same sort of, um, I'm going to use the term weight, but we have the same force on that bottom half and it has to all move one distance of 10 meters. Okay. We also notice that this integral here would evaluate exactly to this 2 times 10 times 10 times g since this would be 2g times 10 times y evaluated from 0 to 10 which would be 2g times 10 times 10. So we end up with the same thing. Okay. So if we're going to go ahead and evaluate this this would be this 2g, 20y minus y squared over 2, evaluated from 10 to 20, plus um, this 2g times 10 times 10. Okay, So we have these different sort of thoughts here. So let's go down here and do our evaluation. So we have this 2g, this is 400 minus 200. Okay. And then I'm going to have this minus, what happens when I plug in 10? So that'll be minus 200 minus 10 squared over 2, so minus 100 over 2, or minus 50. And this is plus, let's see, I have this um, 10 times 10 is 100, times 2 is 200, so I have this 200g joules for, for accounting for that uh, dead weight of the bottom half. Okay, so this is 2g. This is going to be 200, then I have minus 200, and then plus this 50. So I just have the 50 there plus the 200g. So I end up with 300 times gravity times the 9.8 joules as the total work done to lift this rope halfway. Okay. So before we go on to the, the next part, um, I just want to note um, one other thing. So we noticed that um, to lift the entire rope up, it took 400 times g joules of work. Now to lift just the top half of the rope, it took 300 g joules of work, not half of the 400. So it was harder to lift up that first half of the rope because we're dragging that bottom half along. But when I just have that bottom half remaining, that is only going to take the 100 g joules. Okay, so notice work pulling half the rope to the, to the top of the building is not the same as half of the total work of lifting up the entire rope. Okay. And there are some other correct setups that you could do in this problem as well, depending on how you may have labeled your, your rope to begin with. So let's just look at one more um, thing that we could add to this particular problem. So we looked at lifting the entire rope up, lifting just a part of the rope up. 
And I could also look at a situation where I wanted to lift the rope and there was some kind of load attached to it. So I can think about my, my building again here. And I have my, my rope. And now I have some sort of load attached to the bottom of it. So anytime you're trying to do one of these lifting problems and you have a rope, a chain, or a cable, and then you also have a load attached to that, um, in this case your, your total work is going to be equal to the work to lift the rope plus the work to lift whatever the load is. The work to lift your load, just like when we treated this rope here as dead weight, um, is a situation where I, I have constant force. So your work to lift the load here is just going to be your force times distance, or mass times acceleration times distance, or mass times gravity times distance. So I have 30 kilograms of mass times gravity here. And the distance that that 30 kilograms has to travel, if I'm lifting up this entire rope here, is the 20 meters. So I'll have 30 times g times the 20 meters, okay? Which is giving me 600 g joules just for lifting that load the 20 meter distance. So we already found the work to lift the entire rope, I'll rewrite that integral, but we know the work to lift the entire rope from part A was the integral from 0 to 20 of 2g times 200 minus y dy. And I'm adding this to my work to lift the load. So I'll write this out again, 30 times g times 20. Okay. So we had found the work to lift the entire rope was this 400 g joules. And now we're adding that to the work to lift this load, which is 600 g joules. So the total work in this problem here is 1,000 times g joules. Okay, um, so let me know if you have any questions on this material.